Welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for April 2022. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for April. We're going to learn more about Boccherini as well as Henri Matisse and much more. I would like to thank the Chic Society, which is channel memberships here on YouTube, for bringing us this series. If you are interested in joining the Chic Society, I will leave the details down below, or you can click the Join button. The membership is only $1.99 a month, and I give you all sorts of extra content. We do a vodcast every Friday, and once a month we do a live Zoom call together where we get to actually see each other. We also have a pen pal program, so it's really wonderful, and if you would like to support the channel on a higher level and get more content, then consider joining. You are seeing some of the upper tiers here, and at the very end of the video, I'm going to be sharing the elegant connoisseurs with you. They are artists or business owners or high patrons of the channel. So thank you so much to the Chic Society for bringing us this series. Chic assignment number one was to listen to Minuetto by Luigi Boccherini. And I left you a performance by the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra. And I try to leave you live performances because I think it's so wonderful to see musicians perform a piece live. And I hope that you truly enjoyed it. But I also listened to a few other performances on YouTube and some of the comments were hysterical, I have to tell you, because <laughs> there's something about this piece that instantly makes you sit up straight you feel regal, you feel opulent. I don't know, is it just me? But I hear that piece and suddenly the whole mood of the room changes. And I'm not the only one because I checked out this one performance and it has 7 million views. I'll leave it down below. The comments are so funny. So one of them says, me normally, the dinner's fine. And then he wrote down me when I hear this song. The flavors on this evening's cuisine were quite exceptional. <laughs> I think that that's so funny. This one woman wrote, when I clean the house or do chores while listening to this song, it actually makes me feel like I'm the maid to a rich family. <laughs> and it had four, almost 4,000 thumbs up. Someone else wrote, me thinking I'm a world-class chef when preparing instant ramen. Someone else wrote, when you drink tea with your little finger up. And then <laughs> this man wrote, when you tilt your head back while laughing. So these are all people's reactions to this piece. And I have to say it's all true. It just Whatever you are doing when you are listening to this piece, suddenly you feel like a billionaire and you are in your palace or something like that. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this performance. We're going to learn a few facts about Boccherini right now. I pulled many of these facts from Vialma.com and I will link their website down below. So Rodolfo Luigi Boccherini was born in 1743 in Lucca, Italy, and he died May 28, 1805 in Madrid, Spain. So the first fact about him was that he was a profound composer and a gifted cellist. So the cello was his instrument that he was really known for. He invented previously unknown ensembles for it, like the string quintet, and he was very prolific. He had over 600 works, that's a lot. The second fact is that he was born in Italy to a family of musicians. Luigi Boccherini spent the majority of his life composing in Spain, however, for the court of Madrid. This is an interesting fact. He became so at home there in Spain that he even signed certain documents Luis, a Spanish spelling of Luigi. The third interesting fact is that despite mainly residing in Madrid, Boccherini visited many European courts. He was the protege of the Enfant Don Luis of Spain and of Frederick William II of Prussia, yet he was also very stubborn. Enfant Don Luis once expressed his dissatisfaction at one of his trios and requested that Boccherini change it. The maestro, instead of heeding the royal request, doubled the length of the passage. <laughs> so he was quickly dismissed and he sought protection in France from Napoleon's brother, Lucien Bonaparte. So imagine the king is telling you to change the song you composed and then you do the opposite. That's really very bold on his part. The fourth fact is that he was known as the greatest cellist in Europe and he possessed probably the finest instruments of his time. And finally, a great admirer of Joseph Haydn, he is sometimes referred to as Haydn's wife as detractors think the two composers' music sounds so much alike. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed listening to Menuetto by Luigi Boccherini. I know from here on out, whenever I hear this piece, I will 
instantly remember who it is composed by. And now we are going to study the life and artwork of Henri Matisse. Before we jump into that, I wanted to share that one of our daily connoisseurs here, Miriam, has a channel for kids called Discover and Create, and she released a video right around the same time about how to create a Matisse collage with your children. It's a wonderful video, and I want to do this with my kids, so I thought I'd leave her video linked for you down below. Okay, let's learn now about Henri Matisse. Henri Matisse was a French artist regarded as one of the great formative figures in 20th century art, a master of the use of color and form to convey emotional expression. He was born in December of 1869 in Le Cateau, France, to a middle-class family. He began painting during a convalescence from an appendicitis operation in 1890. In 1891, he moved to Paris to study art. Matisse became an accomplished painter, sculptor, and graphic designer, and one of the most influential artists of the 1900s. So a little side note here, because I always love studying what makes these artists successful, even if it's just posthumously, although Henri Matisse didn't have to wait to enjoy his fame. He was famous while he was alive. But I love that he was convalescing from appendicitis. So he was ill, he was in bed, and he decided to study art and see where it took him. So I always think about this with our children, and maybe when they're convalescing, we might just let them play video games the whole time or, or things like that. But it's so important sometimes in periods of convalescence to study uh, the thing that gives you passion or to explore things like that because you have the time. It was really similar with Frida Kahlo's life as well. She was, uh, when she was convalescing, she discovered her art as well. So if you ever convalesce, maybe you could use that time to discover your passion too. In 1892, having given up his law career, he went to Paris to study art formally. His first teachers were academically trained and relatively conservative. Matisse's own early style was a conventional form of naturalism, and he made many copies after the old masters. He also studied more contemporary art, especially that of the Impressionists, and he began to experiment, earning a reputation as a rebellious member of his studio classes. Matisse's true artistic liberation in terms of the use of color to render forms and organize spatial planes came about first through the influence of the French painters Paul Gauguin and Paul Cezanne, and the Dutch artist Vincent van Gogh whose work he studied closely beginning about 1899. Now, isn't that interesting? So we just studied Van Gogh earlier in the year, and Gauguin was the one who went to Van Gogh to help him, and then they ended up fighting, the whole razor situation happened, but again, they all knew each other. It's just crazy. Then, in 1903 and 1904, Matisse encountered the Pontalus painting of Henri Edmond Cross and Paul Signac. Cross and Signac were experimenting with juxtaposing small strokes often dots or points of pure pigment to create the strongest visual vibration of intense color. I love that. Everything has a vibration and color certainly does too. Matisse adopted their technique and modified it repeatedly using broader strokes. By 1905, he had produced some of the boldest color images ever created, including a striking picture of his wife, Greenstripe, Madame Matisse, from 1905. The title refers to a broad stroke of brilliant green that defines Madame Matisse's brow and nose. He gained the approval of a number of influential critics, including Gertrude Stein and her family. Although intellectually sophisticated, Matisse always emphasized the importance of instinct and intuition in the production of a work of art. He argued that an artist did not have complete control over color and form. Instead, color shapes and lines would come to dictate to the sensitive artist how they might be employed in relation to one another. He often emphasized his joy in abandoning himself to the play of the forces of color and design, and he explained the rhythmic but distorted forms of many of his figures in terms of the working out of a total pictorial harmony. From the 1920s until his death, Matisse spent much time in the south of France, particularly Nice, painting local scenes with a thin, fluid application of bright color. Matisse died of a heart attack at the age of 84 on November 3rd, 1954, and he is buried in Nice. So when I was in Paris, I had the pleasure of seeing several Matisse paintings. And what I love about his paintings is the bold use of color, the experimentation, the play, uh, the sense of fun that he had, and how you just step into his world when you look at his paintings. I also love that he didn't just do paintings, but that he also did several other art mediums. However, in this section, we're just going to focus on his paintings. And I do find it to be 
I do find it to be true that many of these artists study the masters in the beginning and they copy them somewhat. Then they veer off and they form their own style, their own genre. And I feel like that's true for all of us, whether we're trying to find our true style with our clothing or whether we're trying to uh, learn how to decorate our home. You might look at a magazine for inspiration and kind of copy that and then make it your own. I just love where his art went. And I think the thing that inspires me most about these artists that we study and composers is how prolific they were. And if you are an artist or you create things, just never stop. Just always create and don't worry about you know the genre that you're supposed to stick to or how, how you've always done things. Don't be afraid to experiment. I know that I am going in that direction myself with my writing as well as my videos and I love it. I think I would like to create until the day I die and I hope that I am prolific as well and that my art just keeps getting better and better. That's my hope. So I hope that you enjoyed studying Matisse this month. Chic assignment number three was to get dressed for no reason at all and notice how you feel about it. <laughs> so I would love to know in the comment section what has happened when you did this. A lot of people, if you're not used to this, you might have been extremely uncomfortable, definitely out of your comfort zone. Some people do not like the attention that comes with dressing up. Now, I still enjoy doing this. So for example, today I'm wearing this white dress and I'm going nowhere. I wasn't really seeing anybody today, but I love the feeling. It just automatically elevates my feeling for the day. And so that is why I assigned that this month. So I'd love to hear what you found. Did people notice? Did you get too much attention? Did you feel great? Did you think I can't do this anymore? Let us know truly what you felt with this assignment. And perhaps the most important assignment was Shig assignment number four, where we recognized a negative thought that we frequently have. We stopped ourselves from thinking the thought and we replaced it with a thought of gratitude because we were trying to cultivate more gratitude and joy in our lives. And this is this meditation in action. And I really feel that it is a practical way to help your everyday life. So most of us have something we do every day that we dread. And our mental self-talk about this thing makes it even worse. It just magnifies it and we dread it even more. So what we can always do in any situation is look for what to be grateful for. I tried to do this with the dishes this month. I really just have this thing with the dishes. But every time I had that negative thought about the dishes when it was my turn to do them, I said to myself, I'm grateful to have these dishes. I'm grateful that we had food to put on these dishes. <laughs> I'm grateful that I have a dishwasher so I don't have to wash everything by hand all the time. And then suddenly the list expands and you can't stop yourself from becoming grateful for it. So I would love to know what was your thing this month that you worked on and how did it change when you replaced your negative thought with one of gratitude? I always like to share what I'm reading and currently I'm reading Beyond the Secret Garden by Anne Thwaite. And it is the biography of Frances Hodgson Burnett who wrote one of my favorite books, The Secret Garden. I didn't know much about Frances's life, so I'm really finding this interesting. It is so good. So anyway, that's what I'm reading right now and I would love to know what you're reading down below. And now I'm going to be sharing The Elegant Connoisseurs with you. The 90 Day Memoir Workshop with Alan Watt from the LA Writers Lab. Bernadette M. Petrata from Polite Society School of Etiquette. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop. Elaine Brisebois, Certified Nutritionist and Women's Weight Loss Coach. Emily McNeil, Fine Art. Ashley Buffa, Freedom Mom Smart Kid Chore System. Guy Blaze, Author of Love Like the French. Indiana Davis from Willow Nook Seasonal Subscription Box. Carrie Van Hooser, Author of Tis the Season for Poetry. Nicole Brignol, Founder of Lovely Bits. Macondo Forever Woven Placemats. Sarah Miller from sarahmillerjewelry.com. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance. Teresa Maples from Self Care Routine Cards. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Alan Scottish Shortbread. Sturm Brothers Custom Design and Fine Jewelry. And thank you to the following Catherine Ray, Adelaide Beer, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Gabrielle Julie. Janice Leitner, Jenny Candelaria, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Henry, Juliette Keeler Lebain, Julie Coleman, Linda Eckloff, Marie Caudill, and Maria Condor. 
I would like to thank the Sheik Society for bringing us this wonderful series. I hope that you have enjoyed this month's assignments. Keep it going until May when we will have a new set of assignments. In the meantime, keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye. Thank you.